You are listening live to the program. Brought to you by Worth Harley Davidson North. Kansas City's biggest selection of brand new 2021 Harleys are here now at I-29 in Tiffany Springs or online at WorthHarleyDavidson.com. Why the hell not? You're worth it. Your teams, your town, your program. David will arrive here Friday morning, so he will practice with us Friday. Tristan will not make the trip. Tristan tested positive earlier this week. He will be. He will remain in Lawrence until uh, the following week. And then Jalen, uh, it looks like that he'll be coming to Indy on, on uh, Monday. I think it's normal because it's our first time, you know, so to speak. A lot of guys' first time. So it's not as if we three or four years, a guy's been a program was three straight years, and all of a sudden, man, this is different. You know, the difference is just uh, the, the bubble, so to speak, of not being able to go to and from uh, outside of the hotel. I got a wacky question for you. Uh, the, everybody knows the uh, the One Shining Moment song. I'm, I'm curious, have you used it at all as kind of a motivation or inspiration for your players at, at all? Well, we've used it before, of course, uh, but but not actually, not every word of the song would say what the ball is tipped. And there you are. Now, I'll give you the rest of it later. So... <laughs> And now, a man who, unlike me, has watched one shining moment with a vested interest, Seren Petro. Right you are, Kay. Right you are. Petro on the program on Sports Radio 810 WHB, the NCAA tournament. Uh, Still a day away for even the play-ins. I don't like that. I'm ready for some hoops. I I, I would like things to get going. So uh, I'm not down with that. This is going to be a weird tournament, but at least we're going to have a tournament. We've all got that going for us, right? Yep. By now, we've got usually got two games in the books and looking for two more tonight. Wow. How about those? How about that six, uh, that 11 seed last time? 11 11. Crazy, man. Last second shot. 16 uh, matchup. But no. No. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we'll talk some college basketball uh, coming up. Glenn Rice is going to join us. Had uh, arguably the greatest tournament that any player's ever had. Yep. You know, Danny Manning, who we talked to yesterday, his name would be in that discussion as well, along with probably Lou Alcindor, Bill Walton. Who else would you say just had an incredible tournament? Glenn Rice has scored more points in one NCAA tournament than anybody else. Yeah, Larry Johnson. I was looking no. at the, the list. I think Johnson's point total is second. Is it really? Okay, then yes. 175. That surprised me, too. Where's Danny's? Uh, let me find that page again. It's it's way up there. I mean, 31 and, what, 31 and 18, 18 in the final? Five blocks, I think. Mercy. Uh, yeah, Dan, Danny was, I mean, he maybe, he had, he had, I think it was voted the third best tournament game, or maybe it was the third best championship game. Didn't Walton have, I think Walton's. Yeah, he was 21 of 22. Yeah, one of those years when they played in St. Louis, but I, I do love how Walton, you know, in that game was a glorified layup maker. <laughs> I mean, there was there was a lot of just like, oh, Walton turn bank turn Walton, bank. Walton spin banks it in. Walton spins lays it in. Walton alone under the hoop. <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta ask yourself why are they leaving a guy people are calling the greatest center in college basketball history wide open, but all, they are all by himself. Uh, anyway, I wonder. So. He just, I wonder. He, like, how did he miss the one shot he missed? I, he, uh, <laughs> I, I've seen. I've seen what it was. Yeah, he, he blew a dunk. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it was. I can't remember. I, I can't remember watching. I blew that dunk. I was right there. The worst shot ever. I was right there. Um, we'll, we'll talk to Glenn Rice without the Bill, bad Bill Walton impressions. Yeah. Uh, Matt Snyder from CBS Sports writes about the baseball. He's penned a piece about the American League Central. Get his thoughts on the AL Central as well as the uh, Kansas City Royals. Uh, Frank Bull will be with us in the 4 o'clock hour. Some Frank opinions will be had uh, during that time. Eric Eager in the 5 to kind of wrap up free agency. We're going to get into some NFL football to get started uh, here uh, in a moment. You can grab a line right now if you'd like, 913 810 I'm going to talk about Trent Williams in a second. First of all, one more note on the college basketball. Don't forget to register for the Sports Radio 810 Bracket Challenge today. We'd love for you to join the program group. If you'd like, go to 810whb.com, click on the Bracket Challenge icon and get signed up. Uh, lots of prizes, including gift cards to uh, uh, Shaman's, Leewood Total Wellness, uh, High V, 23rd Street Brewery, and much, much more. Just register and form your own Bracket Challenge if you want. You can run your families. Bracket challenge in there, create your own group, and then you can it'll score it for you. 
Uh, so it's a, a great tool to have if you uh, want to enjoy the NCAA tournament, all brought to you by CBD American Shaman, Xfinity Mobile, 23rd Street Brewery, and hy V. Um, 23rd Street Brewery, your basketball headquarters all month long. Uh, Matt and his great staff there at the 23rd Street Brewery. You can uh, support a local favorite curbside dine-in and carry out the 23rd Street Brewery in Lawrence is there. And if you do sign up, if you uh, have the guts to come play in our bracket, you can compete with people like me and Jedro24. Isn't that what you're under there? Yeah, Jedro24. Curtis Seabolt. Uh, you can also compete. We always have such great folks uh, that, that come. The A-Train, uh, Stilkin, uh, just Matt. Uh, I like this one. Long time, first time. <laughs> BBQ, BBQ, BBQ. Uh, I, I will take that. Um, Henja. Uh, Dr. TJ Soyeye Pumpfick. <laughs> For you Tiger fans out there. J-Bro. Uh, Pokey Metrics, uh, JC. Do you think that's the JC? That would be uh, something. Thank you that for is, for playing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for playing. Uh, if that, that, that's I'm what we got. Going to say he probably has an advantage. Uh, I'm I'm happy to see that the ass man is back. <laughs> after after a two year ga- or one year gap, yeah, he's the, back. He is, he is back. He just one of our favorites, uh, as, as he always likes. And uh, maybe my favorite so far of our uh, bracket entries into the program uh, entry, Gavin's Pants. <laughs> we lost our friend Gavin, uh, R.I.P. Gavin, uh, great uh, friend of the program, uh, wonderful uh, guy, and uh, always brought it strong for Stump the Chumps. But he did have some fantastic – I wonder if that's T-Box. Is in his Gavin's pants. Could be. That could be. Yeah, could. Gavin brought it strong for Chumps and and the uh, the, clo- the clothing department, particularly yes. the pants. And the first time yes. we saw him out at Jazz and 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 Lawrence, I was like, that is impressive. Yes. Uh, <laughs> He's well, yeah, to we miss you, Gavin. Yep. Uh, one of one of the mm. greats. Uh, but I, I love that he lives on in our bracket contest as Gavin's pants. They they they, they have their own entry. They, they filled out a bracket, and so, you know, pants are welcome. You know, if Steve's pants want to enter, they're welcome. Pants optional? Pants, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going uh, to throw in some extra, right? There's all the great prizes that we have. I'm going to throw in some extra from the program kitty for whoever wins uh, the program. I, I, can't, I can't say yet. I can't say yet. Maybe – Maybe I'll maybe I'll reach out to Joe Spiker and the folks at Easton Roofing and see if I can get some like you know maybe just a, a trash bag full of insulation, you know use it where you need it. I, I think that would be a great additional prize, don't you? Hell yeah, you know a random gutter. Um, you know just throw you know, one in a gutter end. Yeah, several several piece. sections of, of of roof. You know um, a downspout. Yeah, so um, that that that'll be fun. Uh, that'll be great uh, to see. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, that, that would be. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come up with some extra extras to uh, entice you. But uh, we always love to see the colorful names. Uh, please keep it at least n- no more than suggestive, no more than innuendos. Try to be. Uh, you know, we'd like to to give you a shout out. So uh, at least make it FCC. Uh, you know, fair compliance right? like, so yeah. that we can so that we can say it. But. Uh, you know, agbaginius tire biter. <laughs> tire biter has I don't I don't know what it means. Sounds sounds lewd, uh, right? I, like, I, part of me wants to know, and part of me is like I'm not sure I could recover from that. Phineas uh, Phineas J. Whoopi. Phineas J. Whoopi. You're the greatest. Uh, I, I ask I, your I, kids. I, ask your parents. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I, it's the names are are what uh, they make me happy. We might even the best name might even get a get, get something from the program. I think. I think we should do that, don't you? Yep. Best name, best entry. Uh, we welcome you if you just want. You know, if you're Joe Smith, hey Joe Smith, come on in. But uh, if if you if you're clever, we'd love a clever name too. That would be fantastic. Uh, so join us, please. A ten WHP dot com. Our bracket contest. Uh, it, it may not have the biggest prize pool. But the program one will have the best collection of names. No question. You'll at least get a chuckle every time you check your standings. 
<laughs> That's one of How the is Tire Biter beating me? That's one of the high lo- highlights of this this contest is going through and seeing <laughs> seeing the names. Can you believe Phineas J. Whoopi, <laughs> Whoopi actually had Cleveland State? Phineas J. Whoopi actually is the greatest. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so join us. Um, all right, some NFL uh, free agent news to get things started. Uh, the reports, I don't know. If, uh, do we really think that the Chiefs were in it to the end on Trent Williams on a 130-plus? Th- these are the reports. Where, uh, of course, now I have so many stories open, I'm not sure where it is. But um, wh- one of the reports had the Chiefs being, and we said yesterday that the Bears and Chiefs were listed as the uh, you know biggest uh, competition for Trent Williams. But he is uh, he signs for a, 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 just a massive deal, 130 plus million dollars, 138 million, 55.1 million guaranteed, and he'll be what? He'll turn 33 early in the season, I believe. I believe that is correct. That Sometimes. is shocking to me. Six for 138. Uh, I think when all the details come July. out about it, 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 33 in July, July 19th. Am I the only one who's kind of stunned at this? Um, My expectation yeah. is it's going to be a three-year deal for, you know, in reality, it's got 55 total guaranteed. So the third year will probably, you know, he'll need to activate something. Uh, in that third year, there'll be a cap hit. He's probably going to get through at least three years on it, but – uh, you're, you're talking about a guy who's going to – you're paying him to play at 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. But even the meat of the deal that's going to be guaranteed is 33, 34, and 35. Uh, listen, I would love to have seen Trent Williams be the left tackle for the Chiefs, but I, I think that is too much. And I think that that contract may, – maybe not. I mean, offensive tackles, you know, we saw Anthony Munoz play to late in his career – uh, what's his name uh, for the Rams is 38 or 39. You know, it, it's a spot. What uh, Jackie Slater mm-hmm. played into his late 30s. It is. Yeah, if there's Matthews. a spot. Yeah. If there's a spot where you can. And he played up and he played on the interior at the end. Yeah. Um, but if there's a spot, it's it's O-line and it, and it tends to be offensive tackle. Uh, your ability to play for a long time. So it's not a wide out that they're signing at this age. Uh, although we've seen some wide outs play, you know, Charlie, uh, Charlie Joyner. Uh, played into his late mm-hmm. 30s Jerry Rice. and played at a high le- level. You know, but but think about it. If the Chiefs were really in this to the end, they've got a 20 they've got 20 plus million dollars that they can slap around in free agency. Yeah, that's that does seem like a, you know, it's you're probably going to have um let me try to find a way to the 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 best free agent tackle is going to be probably be 32 because if he's 28, he's probably not getting away, you know. So right. the, almost every year, the guy who's in Trent Williams' spot is going to be about that age. But the amount of money the, it, and and the term "in it to the end" is is vague enough, I think, to leave a lot of wiggle room as far as just how far to the end. Was it were they in it to the end before they said no? Were they really that close to the number? There are so many things to blanks to fill in to, to say what what exactly does it mean to be in it to the end? I don't think we know that yet. We may never know that. I I, I would be uh, an agent's nightmare, and I'd probably get blackballed by some. You know, maybe you could pull this off once or twice, but like I'd be like if we were sitting here and we we were running the Chiefs, I'd be like, okay, I'm I'm good up to eighteen million, and if they're like, well, they're at nineteen, I would keep offering. I'd be like, okay, twenty, all right, twenty one, all right, twenty two. You know, keep driving them up like like it's a fantasy auction. Mm-hmm. And then when they go, okay, yep, they're not going to go that high. Okay, great. And all we need is, uh, you know, uh, total. You know, we're, we're not going to we're not going to guarantee this year. You know, find some point to for the agent to be like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, that's what I was planning on the whole time. Okay, well, go go with your last best offer then. You know, go to the Niners. See ya, and just try to drive the price up. Was, was, was there a little bit of that? Going on from the Chiefs, you know, just driving the price up to make it, okay, let's take as much money out of the, the Niners' coffers as we can. Uh, or do they really have that kind of money? Now, listen, $23 million is the average. Doesn't mean that, that he's, he was going to count $23 million against this year's cap, right? With the signing bonus of $30 million, 
you can spread that out. I, I think five years is the limit. So you can spread that out. So six million plus a, a one million dollar. He's probably going to count seven million against this year's cap. So that's one of the ways they would do it. But the point is, though, okay, you still that number in the second and third year is going to go way up, mm-hmm. right? Because the salaries have to come into play. And I'm if they were really in it to the end, they do not appear to be shifting gears to the long play. If they if they made a legit run at adding Thune and Trent Williams. Don't get me wrong. Patrick Mahomes would be thrilled when he stepped up under center. Uh, but if one or both of them go down and that much of your cap is sitting on the sidelines, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a, almost a, not, not a season-ending problem, but it, something like that probably takes you out of any serious chance to win at all. I, I mean, look, I, I, I love the idea of Trent Williams and Thune being on the Chiefs offensive line on opening day. I, I don't love the idea – of looking out there and seeing neither one of them two years from now while they take up $55 million mm-hmm. worth of the cap. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's what you're looking at. And, and I, and I think as, you know, as an older fan where time really does move faster when you get to be older, you know, because you, it, you blink your eyes and it's winter and you blink them again and it's summer, right? Like that's kind of how time works. The older you get, the faster it goes because you've got more time to compare it to. So it's a smaller percentage of your life believe me like the 20 we've gone through a pandemic and we have the 2020 season the 2023 season will come and you will want a a competitive chiefs team on the field It, it will be here and if you start making you know intelligent decisions for the long haul in the end you're you're gonna be you're gonna have more opportunities to compete like every year cannot be the run it back tour you can do that once, and I think it's a little scary if they really were. If that's accurate reporting, and I'm not convinced that it is, that they were in it to the end because there is going to be a big hit. Well, the TV contracts are going to come. Yes, they're going to come, and everybody else is going to have $80 million to spend in free agency, and the Chiefs are going to have 16 mm-hmm. And by the way, every player's salary is going to go up. So instead of it costing $23 million for Trent Williams, it's going to cost $40 million for Trent Williams. That's the problem. And so if you only have $16 million, there's going to be an issue, right? You're not going and, to be able to get out there and compete in free agency. That day will come. And in three years, you're going to be looking to replace your tackles through the draft anyway. So, yeah. I mean, why, why just push that down the road? Because Patrick Mahomes is going to start demanding a big check. So you're not, you're not going to be able to do anything in three or four years from now in free agency in that, at that spot. Um, if, if you if you do make that move, you sure as hell better win it this year and next year. Yeah. 913-310-810, the phone number, 913-310-810. Uh, we will take a break. Uh, we will uh, take your phone calls next. We're talking some football. We'll get to some college basketball with Glenn Rice later this hour. You're listening to the program. The program with Soren Petro. I used to do subversive radio myself in the 70s, okay? But for this gig... We need a little more positivity, all right? Weekdays from 2 to 6 on Sports Radio 810 WHB. You're listening to the program on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Make sure you get signed up for our bracket challenge uh, here at 810. A lot of great prizes, including that at Travis Kelsey Autograph Football. It's brought to you by CBD American Shaman Xfinity Mobile. 23rd Street Brewery, High V, CBD American Shaman. You can stop by your local American Shaman, bring your bracket in to your uh, local CBD American Shaman location and receive 30% off. You heard me right. Fill out your bracket, print it up, take it into CBD American Shaman, save 30%. There's just another reason to get signed up. We'd love for you to uh, join our program group if you'd like. Uh, we will be giving extra prizes, like for the most creative names, CBD American Shaman, everything is better. Ooh with the feather uh 913-3810-810 talking some uh, nfl free agent football i'm uh, gonna go to the phones here in a second uh russell wilson to the bears uh allegedly the bears offered three first round picks two starting players and a third round pick and we're told no um <laughs> at first blanche i i i didn't know what was surprised me more that the bears offered it or the Seahawks turned it down. I, I think the Seahawks made the right call. Yeah. I mean, as, as a guy who's rooted for a team that watched them chase the quarterback position for decade after decade after decade when you got it, like what would you – what offer could somebody make 
for Patrick Mahomes that you would be like, I'm okay with the Chiefs making this deal? I can't think of one. I mean, the, the number like – You like, would not like, be good with that? Ten number for ones? For Mahomes, or, right? No, no, because you're yeah. – you're stretching those number ones. I'll give you ten number one picks. Well, I don't. What happens ten years from? I don't know what you're going to even be doing ten years from now. We'll even have a team. You know, that's just too far out to have any value at all. So, it it, it isn't necessarily an exponential number of first round picks. If if they had a great quarterback or something, I mean, it just there's no. You think about it for two seconds, you realize you can't construct a deal that's worth it. So, I'll just say no. Yeah. Yeah, nine one three three eight ten eight ten. 810 via phone number. Let's talk to Amos. You're in the program, Amos. What's going on, buddy? I'm back, and I got rid of my venom after I had about six crowns last night at the hotel. Uh, so, good deal. Good deal, my friend. Good deal. <laughs> I think you got me uh, mixed up just here with the whole Sammy Watkins thing. Well, what I was getting at okay. was uh, Teicher was saying, you know, if the price is right, let's bring him back. And what I was trying to say to you was, He's, he's never been healthy. He's not on the field. If you're not reliable, why put you on the field? You know, like uh, Pringle and Robinson. I just, I think it's time to move on is what I was getting at. And, uh, no, I I, think- listen, I'm on the same page. I, I, I think it goes without saying. A, a lot of your ability is based on your availability, and he's not available. And, and the times that he is available, he's – nursing an injury I, i'm i'm with you and and i think we're talking I, we're on the exact same page like if they if they got him back one year two million would you be upset as long as he was helped like could actually play and he's not taking away from developing a younger talent that we could actually use like a pringle then, then the answer is yes you would be upset because i don't think there's any reason to ever think that sammy Watkins will play 16 games it'll be the sun shining on a dog's ass the next time he does so then and, and that's fine I, I don't disagree with you i think that's a it's a fair conclusion i think the upside on him is worth a one year couple million you know two and a half you can throw some incentives in there because he ain't going to reach him right so well, you slap on up, almost any incentives you want totally yes. yeah i mean so my my, my point is I like Sammy Watkins when he's healthy. I think he is a, a productive player, and he brings something to the offense. But I'm not going to pay him. I'm going to pay him like he's not going to play because, you know, in all likelihood, he's not going to play. And one more point, too. You made it really clear. It was awesome yesterday. Was, um, you know, the incident with Brent, uh, Andy Reid's son. You put that situation on any else team. I don't care if it's football, baseball, soccer, whatever. And you try to come out and play a game like that, they were flat, in my opinion, and I was nervous as soon as that news came out. Now, we can make all kinds of excuses about the offensive line and stuff, but I really do think that was a bad psyche for the team getting that news a couple of days before the game. And, and you're right, too, I, about I am so happy that they've got the three back-to-back-to-back championships. I wish we were 3-0 and oh, instead of just one and one, but you're, you're, you know the rail ahead, man. And I love your show. I love Curtis, too, when he chimes in. And I'll listen to you guys off the air. Thanks, Amos. All right, you're a good man, Amos. Thank you for those kind words. We appreciate it very much. Look, I, I, I do think that we'll forever wonder what would have happened. I don't want to take anything away from the Bucks. The Bucks had a hell of a game plan. But I, I think the, the Chiefs didn't change. They didn't do anything really different. They, they did for one drive to start the second half where they pounded the rock. Uh, I think they needed to run the ball a lot more. I, I I think it was a bad, you know, to think you're just going to drop back and sling it. Now, sometimes you get into the game and you want to get to the run, but, okay, all of a sudden now you're down, you're chasing the points, and you, you get a bad, you know, okay, we're going to throw it here because we like this look and this matchup, but then we're going to get back to the run, and then you're incomplete and you're second and ten, so you end up throwing it again. But that doesn't happen very often to Andy Reid. And – so I, I I think the Bucks had a better game plan all around, but I you, we just don't see the Chiefs come out that flat. I, I do think there's something to be said for, you know, the Bucks came out with their hair on fire, and the Chiefs are like, yeah, it's the Super Bowl. We've been here. We've done that. And I, I don't know that there was I, – I definitely think the Britt Reid situation sucked a lot of wind out of their sails and I think took them out of their, out of their proper mindset. But I also think – they forgot how they came out and played with their hair on fire against the 49ers. And I think the Bucks came out and played that way, and the Chiefs did. Now, it may be 100% because of the situation that was going on with Britt Reed. It may be 2% because of the situation that was going on. But Andy Reed picked a bad day to have his worst day. Yep. Again, big picture. If you didn't hear the comments from yesterday, 
uh, an AFC championship game appearance, a Super Bowl championship, and then a Lamar Hunt trophy with a loss in the Super Bowl, that's a hell of a three-year run. There's no reason. And to Amos's point, you know, a couple of Coronas helped. Uh, but, but you know, he, he, he you know, admits, right, we, we – it's been a great run for the Chiefs. We want it to continue, right? We, and I think the Chiefs are in a good position for it to continue. I don't know that we're going to be in the conference championship game every year, but we're going to be a, a, a watching a team that absolutely is fighting for it every year. And those three things you said uh, they did the last three years, saying. that's exactly what they did the yeah. first 57 or 55 years they were in Kansas City. Three conference championship yeah. games, yeah. two Super Bowls, and one win. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk some college basketball with the highest single tournament score ever in a tournament, Glenn Rice. The program with Soren Petro. Arrogance may not be a uniquely American trait, but I must say you do it better than anyone. Weekdays from 2 to 6 on Sports Radio 810 WHB. All right, welcome back here on the program here on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Soren Petro with you and uh, college basketball right around the corner. You can take a shot at uh, winning $100,000, betonline.net. Uh, that is uh, where you can do it. Their $100,000 bracket contest is over on Bet Online. Go to betonline.net. Uh, you can also check out the uh, odds. Gonzaga, the favorite at 9-5. to five. Uh, They uh, That's a by the way, a, a pretty heavy favorite, as a matter of fact. Uh, one of the heavier favorites we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, we talked about that uh, in our last segment, uh, some of the odds that are out there. Kansas, 50-1 to 1 for you uh, Jayhawk fans, if you want to know where they are. Missouri, 150-1. to 1. That would be a Cinderella story. Let's talk to uh, a guy who, uh, you know, a three seed was Michigan, but I don't know that you could say Glenn Rice's team uh, was necessarily a Cinderella with all the talent they had. Uh, Glenn, uh, thanks for joining us, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. I, I, I look at it as a sort of a Cinderella thing, because when you think about 89, remember we did lose our head coach going into the NCAA time. So I don't think there's a lot of people that picked up the win. Yeah, no, and and you had a a, a flying Illini team that had, had a great season uh, that that you'd done yeah. battle with in the Big Ten, and uh, but but it was a really talented team. And and what was it about? Was was Bill Frieder leaving and, and Steve Fisher taking over? What galvanized the team? Was it a little adversity that brought out the best in you guys? I, I, I think you know, it did because when you, you know most in most cases when you have a little adversity, it brings you even that much more closer together and. And and we had some good figures in myself and Mark Hughes, who were the only two seniors, and uh, we used that to catapult us toward uh, teams and uh, to, to help us advance. I mean, we just felt that, look, you know what, guys? We need to be on edge. Uh, yeah, we lost our head coach, but at the same time, we still have a basketball team. We still have assistant coaches who have been here with us from then once. We know how to do this. All we got to do is just go out there and do it. Did you and, and talk about going out and doing it? You set a record for points scored in an NCAA tournament. Did you feel like you were going to have the kind of tournament uh, that you had, or is a guy who's the kind of scorer and shooter you are always feel like that, even the days you don't end up playing well? Well, you you felt like that as a senior. I felt like that. The very one person that really needed to step up and show more leadership and more guidance than myself, and. Uh, Everybody was thrust in a role where they had to compete above their head, and uh, it was just unfor- you know, unfortunate for other teams, but fortunate for Michigan and myself. Yeah, I was blessed to be able to, to perform, you know, like no one has in NCAA history, and uh, yeah, that helped us, you know, win a national championship. Uh, 23, 36, 34, 32, 28, and 31 points Glenn Rice scored in the NCAA tournament, uh, shooting uh, with plenty of threes. What, 27 threes collectively in six games, and you shot 57% from the field. Uh, is that the hottest you've ever been as a shooter? Woo! Man, that sounds like a hot plate of rice right there. <laughs> that was the hottest, <laughs> yeah, by far, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I, I had I had stretches uh, when I was with the Hornets uh, in '97, uh, and you know, in capturing the NBC and Arsenal game. But that whole season, uh, I ended up finishing what third behind uh, Michael Jordan and Carl Malone in scoring. Uh, that was probably the, the, the 
the largest run of scoring and consistent scoring I've ever had in my career. I mean, it went like months and months. So, uh, but the six games here in college, uh, that was that was remarkable, and you know, it was a blessing, like I said earlier. Uh, what do you think of the game today? I mean, it, it certainly seems that uh, maybe you were even ahead of your time uh, being a guy. You know, there, there were probably at, at six, seven people who thought that, you know, what, what are you doing out here shooting? And now everybody's running to that three-point line. Do, do you like the way the game is played today? I, I, I like it because I am a three, you know, I like to consider myself to be one of the better shooters, and also I like shooting three-point. I, I do think that at one point it's going to be a little bit much because, uh, it, it, it's taken away some very important uh, things from the team. And it's making our big man obsolete. I mean, what happens when the one day when you have when Tim Duncan comes along or Hakeem Olajuwon or Patrick Ewing, those guys who dominate in the mid-range and in the low post, what happens when you when you got a guy that's coming along with that, uh, like that? Do you overlook it because you need guys that can – Knocked down three pointers, so uh, it's it's a uh, it's a plus, and yet I think in the future it could be something that's uh, very costly to the game. We mentioned your coach Bill Frieder leaving or, or maybe being dispatched by Bo Schembechler would be a better way when word came out that he was <laughs> going to be headed to Arizona State the next year. Uh, did you guys, do, yeah. do players uh, have an idea that that's all going on uh, behind the scenes? I know you do when Bo Schembechler goes on the TV and says, I want a Michigan man coach in Michigan. Um, but but did you have an inkling in the in the days or weeks leading up to it that that was going on with your head coach? In, in our case, we knew. Um, Bill Frieder came in out of respect. Uh, for each and every one of us. He came to talk to us beforehand. Uh, and uh, him and myself had a long conversation. I, I, I let him know that we understood. Bill Free's complete intentions were to finish coaching throughout the tournament. But like you mentioned, uh, Bo Schembechler had other ideas that uh, it forced the hand a little bit. And uh, uh, we understood and it, it, you know, we wish free to. Uh, could have been there throughout that run, uh, but it was just unfortunate that he couldn't. But he was getting still, you know. Bill Free was still in our corner. He told us to go out there and win the thing for Steve Fisher because Steve Fisher wants to give a great guy, great coach. And we knew that in order for Michigan to continue that success, uh, we had to have <clears throat> Fisher as a head coach. And uh, the best chance for him to uh, come back as a head coach was I'm going to yeah, and, and and you did. We're talking to Glenn Rice, uh, of course, uh, a, a absolute star performance uh, in the 1989 NCAA tournament, and of course, all star uh, in the NBA. One of one of the guys that uh, really elevated uh, the jump shot, the three pointer uh, around the uh, game of basketball. Um, Glenn, are you shocked that that Michigan, you know, uh, ha- has not won a championship since uh, that 1989 tournament? Yeah, I am shocked uh, because we've had some great teams. I mean, when you talk about the era of the uh, Fab Five, who, who came close so many times, and you had the, the era where Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway Jr. played there, and, you know, Wagner, who's a younger brother, who is doing a uh, sensational job now with Michigan. We had some great opportunities. And when you speak about great opportunities, we have another one this year. With uh, Jawan Howard doing a uh, tremendous job in uh, guiding the team to uh, uh, captain and number one seed. So, uh, you know, I hope so. Is is Michigan a football school? I mean, did, did did you view it that way when you when you chose Michigan? Like we we have a basketball school in Kansas in our backyard, and and we see how hard it's been for their football program. Michigan is one of the few schools that's been really good at both. What 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 was your view of Michigan when you chose to go there? Yeah, when I was in uh, Michigan, it was uh, predominantly uh, uh, football. Football was the headline uh, for the University at that time. But slowly over the years, uh, basketball started catching up with football, and and then it, it started to be known as a football basketball school. And, and, and I mean, if you really want to say so now, I mean, I, I think more lately it's uh, – Basketball has been capturing the uh, headlines and more so than football now. But at the same time, we just we're thankful that uh, um, our sports can uh, 
lead Michigan to where they need to be leading to. Yeah, uh, and and, and it, how far do you got this team going on your bracket this year? I, I, you know, I'm, <laughs> it would be against my nature to say that I don't have them going all the way. I, I, I completely know how they sound by it, but I really think that uh, if Michigan can go out and play uh, above their head, keep doing it, they have done, and hopefully have livers uh, back uh, with the team. I, I think we have a, a better chance uh, than anyone. I mean, we understand that, you know, you know, when, you know everyone's talking about Gonzaga being uh, the team that, you know, people are picking to win it. Uh, they're a complete team, but at the same time, I think uh, because uh, Michigan is a team that throws so many things at you and they're so disciplined on the defensive end uh, that they uh, could give them a competitive game and perhaps uh, – win this uh, national championship. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a, a great tournament. We're thrilled to have the tournament, right, after not having it last year. Uh, just just to be yeah. able to, to sit down and, and be able to take it all in is, is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I, I'm curious, uh, you, you watched uh, Steve Fisher take over um, and, and, and go on to have a, a brilliant coaching career. Uh, did you see – uh, early on, maybe when he played, uh, you know, at Michigan or, or playing against him in the NBA, did you see head coach down the road for Jawan Howard? I, yeah, I did. absolutely. I mean, I, I, I talk to Steve Fisher all the time. And uh, even when he went through the whole thing with the, the Fab Five when they were, you know, first popped up on the scene and started doing the, the things they did, not just the Michigan for but uh, changing, you know, basketball in some way with the baggy shorts and all. Uh, yeah, I've always had a, a great relationship, and we communicate uh, quite often. And uh, when we talk about Juwan Howard now, uh, he's like a proud father uh, looking at one of his players become not just that was he a great player, but now he's becoming uh, a great coach, and uh, it's, it's 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 a thing that. Uh, you're very proud of, and and for me, I'm like a big brother. Too, you know, right? uh, a lot of people, you know, come after me, and uh, I've seen uh, Jawan grow up as a player at the University of Michigan, and also in the NBA, and then he became a, a member of the uh, uh, Miami Heat family, and now coaching at the University of Michigan. I mean, it's, we can't say enough about the guy, and we're, we're so proud of you know uh, his career as a college player, NBA player. And now a uh, NCAA uh, uh, coach, so uh, yeah, we, we we're gonna pull one hundred and ten percent. I mean, and we think he can get the job done. We're talking to Glenn Rice here in the program. Time for our final four. It's brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System. If you have an urgent orthopedic or sports injury, the University of Kansas Health System has extended weekday hours to see you quickly. Request an appointment at kansashealthsystem.com slash sportsmedicine. Glenn, four quickies for you. I'll start you with this. Who is the toughest player you ever went up against? Who is the toughest that, you know, maybe uh, gave you the most trouble uh, as far as uh, trying to score on? That's easy. Well, mine is 1A and 1B. That would okay. be uh, Michael Jordan and then Scotty Pippen. I mean, those guys. I mean, when you when you talk about defensive players in the history of the NBA, those two guys uh, names probably going to be said the majority of the time. So yeah, but it was it was great for me because it, it prepared me uh, uh, offensively uh, against other guys. Because I you know, if I got loose and was able to do some things against those two guys, then everybody else is history. Best Michigan uniform, the white, the blue, or the yellow? Uh, <laughs> I like the blue. I like the blue. The, blue, the, blue? the yellow, okay. the yellow is good, right? and and most people will probably uh, jump on you for calling it yellow. You know, we always like to say it. maze, uh, the yeah. maze color. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, 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 my mistake. I should, I should have gone down there. I didn't want to sound pretentious uh, by saying maze, so I, I went with yellow. Um, all right. Uh, if you didn't go to Michigan, where were you going to go? Who finished second for Glenn Rice? That's a great question. I mean, I, you know, I almost went to Central Michigan because one of the things that uh, Central Michigan, Central Michigan, believed in who Glenn Rice could become as a basketball player before any college team ever did. 
And the guy that was coaching me at that particular time was Dave Ginsburg. And I, I, when I tell you I was probably weeks away from signing with them, and then I started thinking, yeah, I like this Michigan team. Michigan, you know, the players, you know, we talk often. And uh, when I kept watching the exposure that they got, they – just edged out in Michigan, but I almost I almost was a team of a, a teammate of a Dan Martin. Wow, that's that's wild. Um, all right, and who's your favorite player to watch today? I, I, you know what? I love watching LeBron. I love watching James Harden. A guy that who I'm very happy that he's uh, back playing is uh, Kevin Durant. I mean, this kid is a special kid. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, those are some good ones. Uh, Glenn, uh, thanks for sharing some time with us. I'll uh, we'll always remember that 89 tournament and your incredible run. Enjoy uh, Michigan having that top seed, and hopefully we get a chance to talk to you down the road. You got it, buddy. Thank you. All right, that is Glenn Rice, uh, one of the uh, well, the, the best uh, tournament anyone's ever had from a scoring standpoint. Glenn Rice authored it, uh, joining us here in the program. Remember, $100,000 is up for grabs. BetOnline.net. Uh, That is where you can find it. You can take a shot. Also see all kinds of great tournament odds, who wins what region, by how much. It's all right there. BetOnline.net, their $100,000 bracket challenge. We will take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk some baseball. Matt Snyder from CBS Sports uh, joins us to talk AL Central and Kansas City Royals. It's next here in the program. Time for our Deli Fresh end of the hour question. Sponsored by Good Sense. Chosen by KC Sandwich Lovers for 30 years. Good Sense. Not because it's easy, but because it's better. All right, Oklahoma, one of four schools Missouri has played in both a conference tournament and an NCAA tournament. Name any of the other three. Brought to you by Good Sense. Good Sense. 